guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be switching it up a bit and actually we're gonna be doing a review on these boots here. These are the Corker's Terror Ridge boots. I actually had a few requests to do a review of these and sort of give my opinion on what I think of them. So that's what we're gonna to do today, but I just wanna make a quick announcement real quick. I actually had some Brownsylvania t-shirts made. I actually worked with a guy on Instagram. His name is The Bonnie Fly. He does great artwork and I like a lot of his artwork that he does. So I reached out to him and I actually worked with him to uh, get this design created here for some shirts so those are available on my etsy shop so the link to that will be in the description below so if you want to purchase the shirt and sort of support the channel that way it would be much appreciated and thank you to everybody who does order a shirt so we're going to go ahead and jump right into the review here and i'm not really going to focus on too much of like the highlights of the the shoes per se uh, all of the highlights of the shoe you can obviously find on Corker's site because they're going to be marketing you know, those aspects of the boot to you. But uh, I just want to give you a little background. So basically when I first got into fly fishing, uh, the first pair of boots, uh, wading boots that I ever got were the Corker's Greenback boots. Those are actually sort of like the lower tier boots from Corker's, but I'll tell you what, those boots were great. I had those for, I would say, a good year and a half. About a year mark into having the boots though, they started to sort of deteriorate and a lot of the stitching was falling apart. I ended up getting uh, some super glue and sort of patching them up and I got about another six months out of them. But overall, the boots were great for the price that I paid. I think I, at the time I bought them, they were like $120. So. I mean, a year and a half out of $120 boots, I'll take it. And that was with, you know, heavy fishing as well, at least once or twice a week, probably. After those boots were sort of running their course, I was looking for another pair of boots. And the next pair of boots that I actually ended up getting were the Corker's Dark Horse boots. I was a little skeptical at first getting those boots because I, I thought I would like the BOA system a lot. And I thought, you know, hey, this will be super easy to put on, you know, quick and take off real easy once I'm done. And I thought that that BOA system, I'd be able to really crank down the boots and, you know, get them nice and tight. But as far as those boots go, the, the, the Dark Horse boots are really good as well. So they're a step up from the Greenback boots. Actually, I think they might be a few steps up. I think there's like the Buckskin boots or something in between. I, I could be wrong, but I, I think there is a boot in between those and you know the Dark Horse series. But uh, with the Dark Horse series, you actually get protected stitching, which is gonna you know increase the longevity of the boots by like tenfold. And uh, the main thing, like I said, was the BOA system for me. But I had those boots for about two years, and the boots were in perfect condition still. The only reason that I ended up actually upgrading is because the bow system had broke on it twice. And that's, you know, that's just the nature of the bow system. It's not that Corker's implemented a terrible bow system. It's just, this is, this is why uh, I'm, I'm gonna actually not recommend bow systems. Unless you have some sort of issue where maybe you can't get down or you can't bend down to put your boots on very easily or, you know, something like that. I would definitely recommend like a bow system for someone that has like, uh, sort of like a convenience issue or something like that. But if you just want longevity and not having to mess with any issues and you want your boots to be like super tight and just overall durable, I would say go with laces. But basically the, the BOA system, the nature of it is that you're in the water, the plastic coating on the wires, over time you're nipping it on rocks, you're hitting it off stuff and it's gonna, you know, it's gonna eat through that plastic and then you're gonna to get to a point where it, the water's touching the, the steel cables and it's just gonna rust and it's just gonna snap on you one day. After I had it snap on me the first time, I ended up replacing the BOA system and I got about the same amount of use out of it as the first one and it snapped again. But at that point I was just like, you know what? I, I don't know if I wanna deal with this anymore. And um, so basically this is how I ended up going back to the laces here with this story. So I was on the stream the one day and I got down to the stream felt a loose boot, my BOA system, the, the wire had snapped. But so what I did, be, because I knew that these boots were prone to the wire snapping because of that, I kept my old greenback boots in the back of my car just because, you know, if my BOA system ended up breaking, I didn't want to ruin a fishing trip. So I keep those in the back of my car. I went up to my car, put those on. And at that moment, I realized that the next boots that I got were going to be laces again, because yeah, it's, you know, not as quick to put on, but that was the first time I had put on lace boots in probably over a year. And you can get those boots so much more tighter than you can with BOA system. 
I used to always think when I got the Bose system that I could really crank that thing down and it would uh, stay tight on my foot, but that's just not the case because after using those Bose systems for a while, I started to notice that like you can tighten those things down at the end, but then once your foot gets wet, you're gonna have to go down there and tighten it again because uh, once the water gets in the boot, it kind of loosens it up. So you have to give it another tighten there. And then as you're wearing them throughout the day, they just tend to loosen up. So you gotta, you gotta really keep going down there, you know, give them a nice little tighten again to sort of keep them tight all day. So um, that was just like another aspect that I didn't like, but you can definitely get laces a lot tighter and they're gonna stay tight throughout the day. So that brings us to these boots here, basically. And again, these are the Corkers Terror Ridge boots. I think they're actually pretty new. I think they came out spring 2020 and this is fall 2020 at the time of recording this. So they're only about six months old. They're the newest boots, I think, in their lineup. Basically, I would compare these to the Dark Horse boots that I got. Love these boots already, super comfortable. Uh, I'll talk about the new feature that they added here in the back, but basically the, the number one factor when you're looking for any wading boot is protected stitching. If you don't got protected stitching, then you're probably, you can guarantee yourself that you're probably only gonna get about one year out of your boots because uh, wading and rubbing up against rocks, the stitching is just not gonna last unless it's protected. So if you're looking at getting any wading boot, you definitely wanna look at protected stitching. If you can, if you can afford it, I would definitely go for that. The new thing that they added with these Terror Ridge boots is this heel lock. And you guys can see this here. I'll actually put some uh, shots of that in now. But basically, I, I was a little skeptical when I first saw this feature because I didn't know how well this strap that's on here was actually going to hold up against rubbing on rocks and stuff. But so far, there's like no wear and tear on that strap whatsoever. So. Uh, that kind of alleviates my, my concerns that I had there with that stuff. And I was kind of also concerned how, like, I thought this is just a marketing thing, but I'll tell you what, when you actually tighten these down and get these secured, it really does lock in your heel. Uh, so it's good for, say you're walking in one of those places where it's uh, muddy and you got like all those you know, dead leaves sitting in some slack water on the stream. And when you step in there, sometimes when you pull your foot up, it almost feels like your boot's gonna come off. With these, with this heel lock, you, you know, even if you get your foot stuck in some of that mud, or maybe even, you know, your foot stuck on a rock or something, you don't feel that your boot coming off like that. That's definitely a nice added feature. The comfort of the boot, I mean, it's pretty standard. Uh, all Corkers boots that I've had are very comfortable. Uh, the laces are nice and strong. Haven't seen any wearing there. Uh, actually, there's a little bit of wearing, but I mean, you know, that's just to be expected. Also, just from the nature of waiting, but yeah, I mean, overall, it's a great boot. So this has nothing to do with the boots um, themselves because these soles on all Corker's boots are, you know, interchangeable. Um, but someone on one of the YouTube comments also was pointing out like, hey, you know, what are the soles that you're using because they look really good. The ones that you were pointing out with those aluminum metal bars on the bottom, those are the aluminum, I think they're called the Corker's Aluma Hex bars or something like that, or triple threat aluminum bars is what they are. So I found those, I was looking for, because I've always just been a rubber bottom uh, person. I, for some reason, I can never find spikes that'll either one, stay in the sole of the boot, or two, that just give me any advantage traction wise or make a difference basically. So I heard good things about the traction with those aluminum bars. So I decided to pull the trigger. They're $70 to get the actual soles and the aluminum bars. And I was a little skeptical, you know, buying it because it's $70. I mean, it's almost half the price of the boot. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna pull the trigger and see what, see what it's like. So I bought them. For the first two months, I was literally blown away by how much traction those things give because it's it's actually insane. If they if Corker's is watching with this, which I doubt they are, but if you guys can find a way to make those aluminum bars a lot more, you know, give them more longevity and not wear out so quick, it would just be a game changer. But the fact of the matter is they're aluminum and you know the riverbed rocks just eat that stuff up like crazy. It's I mean, like I said, I got two months out of them and by that point, one on each of the boots was cracked in half. And at that point also, I mean, the, the aluminum was so far worn away that all that was left that was, you know, touching the riverbed was the steel screws that actually hold them in. And steel on riverbed is almost like ice skating. So at that point they become useless. I actually ended up just taking them off, putting back on the rubber soles 
because I think you're just better off with the rubber soles and steel on the bottom. You, you can buy replacement aluminum bars. I would still be using the aluminum bars and just keep replacing them if the replacements weren't $30. So if they were like $10 replacements, that would be my setup from here on out, but $30 to replace them. And depending on how much you fish, they could be worn out in, I would say a month even. So yeah, that, I just wanted to tell you guys about those Klingons and just sort of give you a little rundown on those. But uh, I would say, yeah, overall, these boots are probably my favorite Corkers boots that I've had so far, just for the sheer fact that they kind of take aspects from both the Greenbacks and the Dark Horse boots that I had and combine it all into one. So you got the laces aspect of the Greenbacks, which allows you to get them a lot more tighter and they're just a lot more durable. And then you have the aspect from the Dark Horse boots, which is the protected stitching and just overall better quality. And then you get the same thing with all Corker's boots, which are the interchangeable soles. And then with these, you get the added feature of the heel lock. But if you're interested in picking up these boots or you're thinking about getting them, I will have a link in the description to them on Amazon. If you guys use that link to purchase these, I actually do get a little uh, bit or like a percentage of the, the cost, but it's at no cost to you. Like the cost is the same for you guys, but I'm just throwing that out there just to, you know, it, it's a small way you can support the channel, but I also don't want to make it sound like I'm just, you know, throwing that in there to, you know, sneak your guys' money or whatever. But we're coming up on a thousand subscribers here soon. So I'm looking into doing some sort of giveaway for that as well. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, go ahead and smash the like button below. Let me know that you guys want to see more videos like this in the future. And then leave a comment for any suggestions on videos that you guys would like to see. And let me know what you think of these boots, if you guys are going to pick them up. And then again, don't forget, I have my Etsy uh, link in the description for the new Brownsylvania shirts. And this is a way that you guys can also support the channel as well, as well as just picking up a cool uh, artwork design from the Bonnie Fly. So that's going to be it for this one. Until next time, peace.